this would basically be like having a child play with a Star Wars toy, but then the store says that it wants the toy back and you have one day to box it up perfectly. That's some, that's some real dark side shit right there. <laughs> <laughs> Super fucked up. episode of Fork Full of Noodles. I'm your host, Chris Mopin. Uh, hey, you might be noticing that uh, the last couple of Fork Full of Noodles that you guys have watched have uh, some background laughter in it, and that's because they are recorded at the live virtual stand-up comedy shows called The Citizen Revolution. Each week at The Citizen Revolution, we talk about a different topic, a different sociopolitical or economic issue, history, philosophy, that sort of stuff. And ideally, we try to add jokes to it. Uh, and each week, we also donate half of those ticket sales to a grassroots organization. For example, the episode that you're about to watch, we donated half of our uh, ticket sales to the Tidewater DSA uh, in Norfolk, Virginia, the Tidewater Democratic Socialists of America. So if you would like to be a part of one of these shows and support independent, socially conscious uh, stand-up comedy uh, as well as a grassroots organization, then grab your tickets and come to one of these Citizen Revolution shows. They're going to be happening pretty much all throughout the year uh, in some capacity. They usually happen on Fridays at 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific time. Tickets are only $5. Uh, if you want to give a little bit more, you totally can. Um, and if you don't get a ticket if you're, or if you're on financial hard times, uh, feel free to message me, and I'm very happy to give you a free ticket to come to these shows. Uh, so, so if you want to do that, check out the link in the description, grab a ticket, and come hang out at one of these shows. They're super, super fun, as you can hear. Uh, it adds uh, it adds a little bit of a little bit of a looser element to it. I know some of this stuff gets very scripted, some of this stuff gets very heavy, but uh, with an audience there, it's the closest thing to having a live performance. So once again, this is Citizen Revolution Shows, Friday nights, 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific. I hope that you can join us. Uh, and if you want free tickets to these shows uh, all the time, um, along with a bunch of awesome uh, bonus content that no one else gets, you can become a sustaining member right on my website at krishmohan.com, or rather krishmohanhaha.com slash donate. That's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N dot com slash donate you can go there you can become a sustaining member directly on my website or on my patreon or via paypal uh, or Bandcamp. there's multiple different ways that you can become a sustaining member and get uh, free tickets to these shows to the citizen revolution shows you get unreleased stand-up comedy and storytelling content uh, you get early access to the full episodes of these fork full of noodles before anybody else gets to see them uh, and a bunch of other really cool stuff. Very little of, of my stuff is behind a paywall, but when it is behind a paywall, it's basically for, uh, you know, the sustaining members and things of that sort. So, and there's going to be some cool uh, stuff coming up uh, down the pipeline as well. Uh, so thanks for, for listening to these announcements, and uh, let's dive into this week's episode. Now, Mayor Amschel Rothschild has said, uh, give me the control of a nation's money supply, and I care not who makes, it, who makes its laws. This is basically an admission that a nation isn't its people, or its laws, or its constitution, but rather its money. The creation of the Fed was pitched as an economic stabilizer, but it is responsible for some of the most heinous acts of violence we've seen in the 20th century. This system has consistently widened the gap of wealth and power in this country and should be seen as an insult to what the United States of America stands for. The Fed is virtually responsible for every single one of America's economic crashes, right? Now, when it was created, 
you can see how that's possible, right? I mean, it's still young. It's still trying to figure things out. You know, it's like a toddler learning to walk. You know, accidents are going to happen. Milk is going to be spilled. Someone's going to take a shit on the carpet. <laughs> <laughs> what are you going to do, you know? But over 100 years, you would figure that the Fed has its shit together. But no, it's just drunk on its own power. And we all know that uh, drunks are, uh, are just big, smelly toddlers. That's all they are. Yeah. And <laughs> shitty with money, too. And very shitty with money. Yes. Agreed. <laughs> now, after the Federal Reserve Act was signed in 1913, the first thing they did was basically get ready to cause a crash, right? From 1914 to 1919, the Fed doubled the money supply. And then in 1919, said the country was broke. So it had to call in all its loans. This is basically the same thing that they claimed was happening in 1907. So really, all they did was kind of play their number one hit single for like four straight years. That's all they did. Now, by 1920, there were panics everywhere. People were pulling their money out of uh, basically every bank that they could think, especially these smaller community-based banks. And those banks went bankrupt. So they were bought up and consolidated by some of the bigger banks who all had connections to the Fed. Senator Charles Lindbergh said that under the Federal Reserve Act, panics are scientifically created. The present panic is the first scientifically created one uh, worked out as we figure out a mathematical equation. Guys, that's the power of math right there, you know? It can create an astronomical amount of panic when it's used for evil, but think how awesome it could be if it was actually used for good, right? I mean, we would be, we would be well on our way to the Star Trek universe if we use math for good, right? I feel like we would all have replicators. I could have a cake whenever I wanted. These are all very positive things. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's really all I want. I just want instantaneous cake. I'm a very simple man. <laughs> That's all I want. <laughs> now, after seeing what the Fed was actually up to, President Florida man, uh, Woodrow Wilson, made this statement. Uh, he said, I am a most unhappy man. I have unwittingly ruined my country. A great <laughs> industrial nation is now controlled by a system of credit. We, no longer ha we are no longer a government by free opinion, no longer a government by conviction and the vote of a majority, but a government by the opinion and the duress of a small group of dominant men. He said this on his way out of office. Now, Good job, Woody. He did it. <laughs> eventually, I feel like the lesson there is eventually Florida men can have conscience, you know? <laughs> <laughs> right as they're about to die. Right as they're about to die. They're just like, oh man, maybe I should have done all those fucked up things. <laughs> There is hope for Florida yet. We just have to figure out a way to kill it. <laughs> now, uh, Senator Lewis McFadden had pointed out that the Fed had usurped the United States government, and he was one of the biggest proponents of pushing back against them. In 1921, the Fed introduced something new to ensure that people would have faith in the market again. They called it a margin loan. Basically, uh, you purchase a stock option at like 10% of the value, right? And then you get a loan from the bank for the rest of the 90%. The way it works is they would appreciate over time and then you can pay off the loan and make money on the back end. But here's the catch. The catch is that that loan can be called in at any moment and you have 24 hours to pay it. This would basically be like having a child play with a Star Wars toy, but then the store says that it wants the toy back and you have one day to box it up perfectly. That's a, that's a real dark side shit right there. <laughs> <laughs> Super fucked up. Actual loan sharks aren't that mean. <laughs> Actually, yeah. Yeah, loan sharks give you a little bit of time. 
you know, there's a, there's a leg breaking procedure in there. Uh, you know, they'll still take you to the hospital. These guys are just being assholes. Also, is this not like the laziest way of making money ever, right? Like pull yourself up by your bootstraps and make an honest living, you monetary maniacs. <laughs> now, in 1929, J.D. Rockefeller, J.P. Morgan, and everybody involved with the Rothschilds and everybody within that class of people pulled their money out of the market, which was investing a lot in margin loans. Once they did that, the market crashed and all the loans were called in after they had depreciated and hundreds and thousands of Americans lost everything. And it's considered one of the worst moments of American history. This is what we all know as the Great Depression. The economy basically looked at what the Fed was doing and was so upset about it that it tried to kill itself. <laughs> <laughs> and, the, and then the Fed just wouldn't let it die. <laughs> is that joke a little too dark for some folks? <laughs> That's great. <laughs> I wrote that and I was like, I don't know if this is too dark or not dark enough. <laughs> <laughs> uh, bring it on, Mohan. <laughs> now, Lewis <Agreed>. McFadden. <laughs> well, great. Uh, Lewis McFadden, uh, the senator from before, who's been against the Fed this whole time, right? Uh, after, after the crash, did try to hold an impeachment trial to disband the Fed. But instead of disbanding the Fed, he had two assassination attempts on his life and then was finally poisoned before the impeachment trials could even begin. And these tactics were all repeated in 2008 again. The Fed cut interest rates for the bank to ensure that they could lend more money to people. And then Wall Street and the banks loaned out those monies at, at these you know, high interest rates. And then when the markets crashed, the people were left in the wake. I mean, this is basically a remix of their number one hit single, right? Manipulate the market to create panic. Which, okay, look, I get it. That's like not that catchy of a title, right? But remember, that hit was written in 1914, which is like way earlier than clickbait. Like they didn't have clickbait <laughs> articles back then. <laughs> you know? And now and today, 12 years later, they're doing it again. Back in March, the New York Fed said it would offer banks $1 trillion in overnight loans with no interest, in addition to pumping another trillion dollars in 14-day loans on a weekly basis. This was basically meant to soothe the banks, you know, like a baby that was not just born, <laughs> <laughs> not just born with a silver spoon in its mouth, but also has a silver spoon to melt portions of the economy to inject it directly into its own ass. <laughs> <laughs> now, back in 1913, <laughs> back in 1913, the Fed was pitched as an economic stabilizer. And once again, things are no different, right? Macroeconomist Stephen Friedman, Friedman, it doesn't matter. Stephen Friedman, let's call him Friedman. Uh, he says that the Fred is a shock absorber and he's absolutely right. It absorbed the shock of a crash that it created only to electrocute the American public with poverty and stress-induced comas. <laughs> And also in March, we, March was a big month for like financial fraud, you guys. They were fucking killing it in March. Mercury must have been in all sorts of retrograde for this shit. Uh, <laughs> also in March, we saw a bunch of senators sell their sh uh, shares of stocks before the market crashed. And then they made millions of dollars right before a global pandemic, which is no different than what the robber barons did in 1929, right? They sold all their stocks because they knew what was coming. They knew what was coming because they orchestrated it. They're, they're, friend, they're like the friend that, that kind of like gets you drunk on 4th of July, right? And then 
tells you to fire bottle rockets everywhere, you know, and then the rest of your homies cars are just like on fire. But this evil <laughs> friend of yours, this fucking guy, he took a cab to get to the party and he insures everybody else's cars. <laughs> The fuck are you putting in those bottle rockets? I don't know. Let's say vodka. You set a whole car on fire. <laughs> I want some. <laughs> I want some. <laughs> These are special bottle rockets. These are Fed bottle rockets. <laughs> now, here's the concern for the Fed today, right? It's that people are selling their stocks because a lot of people are now realizing that it has no real value, right? It would be like trying to buy food with actual monopoly money, <laughs> which don't do that. That's bad advice. Uh, I'm not recommending that. The stock market can't buy you food. You know, it's basically a vehicle to make rich people feel like they're important and the average working class work person feel like they're not working hard enough, right? And the real reason the Fed wants to give banks more money is because it makes more money on the interest from the banks itself. Look, this is a clear indication that the people have lost faith in this currency that the Fed has control over. And we're basically saying, fuck it, we want to be in charge of it. People don't want stocks. They want food and water and health and shelter and safety. <laughs> Instead of Harry Pottering an economy based on a banking spell, the Fed, <laughs> yeah, they could have used those trillions of dollars on purchasing food from community farmers, milk from dairy farmers to feed people, and help funded medical equipment for hospitals. I really feel like a fucking comedian shouldn't have to spell this out. <laughs> <laughs> But here we are in this nightmare hellscape that we live in. <laughs> Look, the Fed has proven time and time again that its need to have power through wealth will mean that the people will be the victims of its tyrannical greed. The markets aren't real, but this health crisis is. And this creature from the capitalist lagoon will be the end of us by not letting us die a goddamn natural death in peace. And that has been your fork full of noodles for this week. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you guys enjoyed this episode, please give it a like. Please give it a share. Get the word out about these things. Content like this often gets suppressed. Uh, it doesn't really get shown to as many people as it possibly could because it's not content that YouTube finds or Facebook finds particularly friendly to the algorithm. So I depend on you guys hitting that like button and hitting that share button. And make sure that you're subscribed to get more videos like this. I put up videos on this channel pretty consistently. Uh, there are at least uh, three to six videos that go up on this channel every single week, maybe more. Sometimes I get the chance to do more. Sometimes it's a little bit less. Uh, but videos like this, videos like The Fork Full of Noodles, videos like The Dispatch, which are more uh, current events and news-based rather than big idea-based, uh, we do some ranty stuff over some news stories that might have slipped through the cracks that corporate mainstream media isn't talking about. And, of course, stand-up comedy clips uh, that I will be posting uh, infrequently throughout the year since I'm not particularly doing live stand-up right now because of, the, uh, because of the current pandemic situation we're in. Uh, but that's why we've pivoted to the online mode. So, uh, like I mentioned at the top of the show, these are part of the Citizen Revolution live stand-up comedy shows. And if you would like to be a part of the audience in a future Citizen Revolution live stand-up comedy show, grab your tickets right now. The link is in the description, or you can grab it directly off of my website as well. I'm pretty much going to be doing these for the duration of the year. They happen on Friday nights at 9 p.m., uh, Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific. Tickets are only $5. They're only $5. Uh, you can donate a little bit more if you would like. And we're going to be donating to, uh, to, to amazing grassroots uh, organizations, activists, journalists, um, people that I think are very important right now that don't have any sort of corporate funding. They're funded, much like myself, by the people 
by by people that watch their things, by people that believe in what they're doing. Um, so if you want to be a part of that, you can uh, check out the links in the description or go to my website, krishmohanhaha.com. That's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A.com. While you're there, uh, you can become a sustaining member or make an additional donation, a well, one-time donation if you would like to, uh, directly from my website uh, by going to krishmohanhaha.com slash donate. That's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N dot com, H-A-H-A dot com slash donate. I'm fucking up my own website, you guys. Um, but uh, sustaining members uh, get uh, a free ticket to all of the uh, live virtual stand-up comedy shows that I do. Uh, they get uh, additional unreleased stand-up comedy and storytelling material. Uh, they get um, early access to the, the comprehensive full episodes of Forkful of Noodles. And there's going to be a bunch of other cool stuff that I'm going to be trying to do, uh, particularly for the sustaining members as well. Um, maybe some Q&A sessions thing, uh, specifically for, for them and, and things of that sort. So uh, I'm working on those sort of things right now. Um, so, so becoming a sustaining member gets, gets you access to a bunch of different stuff. Um, it's it, between the Citizen Revolution shows and the um, sustaining memberships and the donations is pretty much how I'm going to be making my living uh, f going forward till we are out of this pandemic world. Uh, so if you want to be a part of that, if you want to support independent media and a, a grassroots organization, please do uh, consider becoming a sustaining member or grabbing a ticket to one of these shows. While you're on my website, you can also grab a copy of my brand new album, Politely Angry, uh, available on all of the all of the platforms that it would be available on, uh, from your iTunes to your Pandoras and your Google Plays and your Deezers and so on and so forth. Uh, the album talks a lot about um, uh, how religion and e economics are connected together, how religion and capitalism are connected together. Uh, the uh, the problem with uh, the prison industrial complex, and of course, I'm gonna take down Jeff Bezos. I'm gonna do a little takedown of Jeff Bezos because that guy fucking deserves it, right? So, uh, if any of that sort of stuff interests you, please grab a copy of the album. Uh, it, it's also available on Bandcamp for one dollar, uh, so that no one gets priced out. Um, and I am also working on planning uh, to donate one half of. Um, the album sales to a grassroots venue uh, that I have worked with in the past. So, um, yeah, I hope you guys uh, consider uh, donating to that, um, purchasing an album can, and helping out. Uh, and I also have a merch store now with T-shirts and mugs and a bunch of other cool stuff uh, that's also available on my website at krishmohanhaha.com. That's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A. Dot com. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you guys come and check out uh, more of these videos. There's a, a bunch more coming up. Uh, I post pretty frequently on this channel, so if you're new, uh, please make sure that you uh, have subscribed to get updates. Uh, and if you are a returning viewer, thank you. You're fucking awesome. Uh, but also, please make sure that you are continue to be subscribed to this channel because uh, sometimes they unsubscribe people. So, and with with all that said, thank you so much.